Ugh, ah, oh, hey, what's going on, guys? I, uh, yeah, I'm just sitting here uh, playing with my fragrances like a five-year-old, and these are my rock'em, sock'em robots. But I'm glad you're here, because today we're going to be talking about these two fragrances. Mancera's Red Tobacco versus Argos Triumph of Bacchus. Some say smell quite similar, so I'm going to do a battle. Who will win this tumultuous tango of the tenacious tobaccos? That is a frickin' mouthful. But stay tuned to find out. Cue that intro. What's going on, my beautiful fragrance family, and welcome back to My Two Cents. My name is Brian, and this is the show all about boosting your confidence through the art of fragrance and becoming a lasting scent member. It's been a while since I've done a Battle Royale episode. I've been wanting to do this episode for a while, but I needed the weather to change, I needed to cool down, and it's now the perfect time to wear either of these fragrances. But which one do I recommend? Which one do I think is better? Before we throw on the gloves and hop into the ring, I just want to give a quick shout out to the fragrance family. Man, you guys are freaking amazing. I stick and love you guys. Thank you so much for the continued love and support. And if you are new to this channel or you've been stopping by for a little while now, I want to invite you to this amazing fragrance family by hitting that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, flip it to all so that you get notified every time I'm posting new content. Throw me up those likes. And don't forget to leave me some comments down below. I also want to make one other announcement. So I know there are some other fragrance reviewers out there who um, like to check out your collections. I've had a lot of subscribers ask me if I would do something along those lines. So what I want to do is I want to check out your collections. And before I do a collection video, I want to see what you guys are rocking. I want to check out your arsenals. Don't worry, I'm not ever going to bash anybody's arsenals if you get like five fragrances. I don't care. If you'd like, take some pictures of your collection and send them over to me. So if you will, and if you're interested, I will leave my email address at the very top of the description. So send them over to me. I look forward to checking them out. I don't care where you're at on your fragrance journey. I, I like seeing other people's collections. Maybe I'll, it'll help inspire me to pick up some new fragrances. And if you are interested in checking out my collection, then I need you to do me a favor. Leave me some comments down below. I'm not gonna sit here and do a collection episode if nobody wants to see it. So if you wanna check it out, let me know. It'll have to be a two-parter, but I'm totally down to do so. Comment. With all that out of the way, it's time to get into Put them up, put them up, whiffs and sniffs. All right, so the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm going to start with Mancera's Red Tobacco. A lot of people say that Red Tobacco and Argos Triumph of Bacchus smell quite similar. In my opinion, a little bit, not so much. There are a lot of differences, though there are some similarities. But like I said, we'll start with Mancera's Red Tobacco. I will leave the notes right here for you and let's get spraying. All right, so as you can see in the top notes, you're gonna have some cinnamon and some agar wood. Now, for me, the way that this fragrance opens up, it's a little harsh. Not in a bad way, but it might not be super appealing to those around you. Though the harshness doesn't stick around like super long, it's still there. I don't really get that much oud right up top. It's when it starts settling down is when the oud actually kind of pokes its head out. Off the initial rip, you definitely get that saffron and incense and cinnamon and, and spicy characteristics. And, and that's what really makes it kind of harsh. It's not smooth right up top, though it does smooth out as it starts drying down. In this one, I do not get a whole lot of the pear. There's a little bit of like a fruitiness in it, and that's more of the green apple that I get from it. But there's not as much fruitiness as in this as there is in Triumph of Bacchus, but we'll get to that shortly. I do get some sweetness right off the bat, and that sweetness is coming from the vanilla. And there's actually a little slight booziness coming from that vanilla as well. I'm not going to say that this is a boozy fragrance, though there is a slight booziness just from that vanilla. The patchouli is actually quite rich. It's quite green. It's quite dense. It's actually quite alluring. I actually really enjoy it. And that actually blended with the jasmine, which the jasmine is, is definitely there. What I really like about red tobacco is when it starts drying down, that harshness goes away and you get into those heart notes. But then you start getting some guyac wood. And of course, it's called red tobacco for a reason. The tobacco comes in quite shortly after the initial spray. And this is a nice sweet tobacco. It's more of your cherry tobacco. And in this one, I actually get those cherry nuances just a little bit, but it's more like a really rich 
pipe tobacco. The tobacco in this takes me back to a memory when I was a child of going to the mall and I would walk by this place called the Tinderbox, which sold pipe tobacco and cigar. But the tobacco in this really reminds me of that smell. You get a little bit of musk from it and it's definitely more of your dark, dense musk. It's not a super clean musk. There's nothing very overly clean and fresh about this fragrance. This is deep and dark and mysterious and bad boy-esque. I also get a, like a slight medicinal rubberiness throughout this fragrance. I wouldn't say that it's bad because it's not. It's actually a very good fragrance. It's the use of the synthetics that are in this and the oud in this is definitely synthetic. It, it just kind of gives it this like medicinal punch. Not in a bad way, it just, it's subtle. It's back there though. And that's just to my nose. The oud though, even though it is synthetic, it's quite nice. It adds a touch of an animalic quality to this fragrance just to add to the mysteriousness of it. And that's pretty much what I get from Red Tobacco. Now let's talk about Triumph of Bacchus. All right, beautiful bottle. Both presentations are good. This is a better presentation in my opinion. This is a nice presentation. I love this presentation. So I'll leave the notes right up here for you. As you can see, there is this rum accord right up top. And a lot of the notes are quite similar. But here's the difference. Triumph of Bacchus is very polished. The rum is nice and sweet, it's supple, it's soft, it's not overbearing, and you don't have that harsh opening. And with the apple, it is blended very well, and it still adds a little bit of that mentholiness, kind of like Leighton. The saffron adds just a touch of spiciness, and it adds this really nice supple and soft quality to it, almost like a buttery leather. You definitely get that tobacco coming up right up top. And this also reminds me of that sweet cherry pipe tobacco. But that sweet cherry pipe tobacco is just elegant. It's a little bit more sophisticated. It's more of your high-end tobacco. The tonka bean adds just a little bit of like a dusty powderiness to it, but also adds to that sweetness. And adds a touch of an earthiness alongside with that patchouli. You have this boozy tobacco, slightly spicy, supple, kind of leathery, buttery feel right off the get-go. And that actually follows quite nicely into the heart. Same thing, you're gonna have the jasmine in here, and the jasmine just adds such a beautiful, opulent, aromatic touch. The jasmine in this is way, just much more natural than the jasmine that's in red tobacco. Now, I'm not saying red tobacco doesn't have a great jasmine note. It does. This is just better. You get this sweet, resinous, ambery vanilla, and that is so, it's succulent. It's, it's just really nicely blended. And this actually doesn't have the Gaiac wood. You're gonna have cleaner musks in this, not as much dark musk. It's a nice combination of white and dark musks. And that combined with the sandalwood just adds this really creamy aspect to the dry down. It's actually quite buttery and creamy all the way through. It's a very sophisticated, classy tobacco fragrance. That booziness actually kind of flows through the entirety of the fragrance, but it's more heavily boozy up top without that medicinal quality. It adds this really nice top shelf boozy accord to the beginning of this fragrance that kind of dies down, still sticks around. It's in the background sitting back there, but it's one of those rums that's not gonna give you a hangover if you catch my whiff. And that's pretty much Triumph of Bacchus in a nutshell. Now, so red tobacco you can find discounted all the time. You can get this for stinking cheap. 80 to $100. I'll leave in the description where you can find this for the best price. It's a beast. This is a long lasting fragrance. This is a 12 plus hour fragrance, but it's also, you gotta spray lightly. This is a one, two punch type of fragrance. Now, if you do spray too heavy, that opening can actually become quite cloying and very polarizing in a negative way. I have actually gotten some negative comments from this because I sprayed a little too heavy. It will definitely fill a room. And the opening is quite harsh. My nose, I don't hate it. I don't dislike it. But to a lot of people around me and that have smelled on me, they're like, oh man, that's a little too much. You probably should lay back on the sprays. It's a beast. Now where red tobacco is a one-two punch, Triumph of Bacchus, floats like a butterfly, it stings like a bee. This is an amazing fragrance. This is supple and soft, no harshness. It's smooth and rounded from the top to the bottom. It is everything that you're looking for in a sweet, spicy, buttery, leathery tobacco fragrance. It's gorgeous. Price on this though, you're not gonna find this at discounters. That's gonna be $245 for 100 ml, 
$125 for a 30 ml. This is an investment piece. This is for the bad boy at heart. This is for the sophisticated, classy, evening out with your missus, or if you're going to a black tie affair, or you're going to a wedding. This is what I would be rocking. This I would rock, I would say more of just casually, leather jacket, white t-shirt. This is your buttoned up fragrance. This is your buttoned down fragrance. Though they have similarities, this one, like I said, it'll knock you out if you spray too much. This, not so much. This is so attractive in every aspect from the first spray to the dry down, to the bottle, to the juice inside. This is also a long lasting fragrance. I get nine plus hours out of it. This does not project and perform as well as red tobacco, but I still get great performance out of this. You get this on your clothes, it's gonna be hard to get off. Same with this. Now, which one do I recommend? Which one do I think is better? Hmm. Trap of Bacchus definitely wins this one, but this is an investment piece and I need to clarify something. I'm not saying this is a bad fragrance. This is a great fragrance. This is just better. This also is something that you need to save your money for. It's an investment piece. Your shelves will thank you because it looks amazing on your shelf. So does this. But this is something that I would wear more casually. This is more of a day-to-day -day basis. This, you want to impress somebody? You got to say more? I mean, this is freaking amazing. But so is this. I will also say red tobacco is a lot more synthetic. It's not all synthetic, but there's a lot more synthetic qualities to red tobacco, though in a good way. It's not, I'm not saying they're like, oh, it's so synthetic. But this, Triumph of Bacchus, it's very natural smelling, extremely natural smelling. It is blended so freaking well, though this is also very well blended. The synthetics in it are blended to where they do smell a little bit more natural, but this is just luxurious and higher quality. But if you were interested in trying any of these fragrances out, well, first off, you can go over to DecanX and use my code 2 cents 17 and get yourself anywhere from a, I think it's a 3 mil to a 30 ml sample. I get no kickbacks from it. I don't get any money from it. It's just there for you to help you along your fragrance journey. So check it out. Also, you can go over to buyargos.com. Both of these sites will be in the description below. You can get yourself a discovery set of Argos. In my opinion, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Triumph of Bacchus is an incredible fragrance. The, in fact, the entire line of Argos fragrances are freaking phenomenal. Definitely go check out Argos. Get yourself a discovery set. Find out for yourself. Choice is yours. Fragrance is in your court. Figure out which one works into your budget, which one works for you. Test drive them. Either way, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. But in my opinion, Triumph of Bacchus wins this battle. Even though they have similarities, completely different fragrances. So there it is, guys. The tumultuous tango of the tenacious tobaccos. I love tobacco fragrances, and both of these are winners in my book. One's more like Mike Tyson. The other, Muhammad Ali. Check them out. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Whatever you're doing this weekend, have fun. Be safe. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do me a favor. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And always remember, you are stinking beautiful. And until next time, happy scent trails.